Live from the heart of America, I'm Steve Gruber. God bless America. Ready to deliver an inclusive and diverse discussion on the most important topic of the day, giving you better analysis and insight than anyone else. Shining a spotlight on the cockroaches inside the swamp. Boy, they don't like that, giving you truth and justice when you need it most. Here are three big things you need to know right now to start your day. Number one, Joe Biden says he's going to run for re-election, which could paralyze the Democrats because it means the weakest president in modern times is not going away. Not without a fight. Number two, Elon Musk getting slammed for now listing the BBC as government-funded media, putting it alongside a similar title for NPR here in the U.S. And number three, the war on guns. The war on the streets of America that is front and center today. The Louisville, Kentucky mass shooting is yet another sobering event that begs the question, what can we do to stop this from happening? I'm tired, sick and tired, actually, of getting an alert on my phone of an active shooter and wondering... How bad is this one going to be? Praying it's not like Newtown. I find myself torn up about these sorts of things. If this monster, who is 23 years old with a master's degree in finance and had worked at the bank he attacked for the past two or three years, if he had not been able to buy the guns, could this have been stopped? But of course, that's the idea behind red flag laws. They would be used against too many people that have no reason at all to have their guns taken away. Now, As I've said here before many times, I understand the idea of red flag laws, but I don't trust the government to enforce them. I'm concerned they'd be turned on regular folks who are doing nothing wrong, people like you and me. And that's why this argument never gets much traction with me. I've said this many times, disarming me doesn't make the world any safer, doesn't make anyone safer. Disarming me, in fact, makes the world less safe because I'm a guy that would step up to stop a madman if a mass shooting unfolded in front of me. This monster had no obvious problems. He was a successful young man with a college degree, like I said, a master's degree in finance from a great university. His dad has been a very successful college and high school basketball coach in nearby Indiana. This is not the hallmark of mass shooters. This one is a complete rarity insofar as most of the recent mass shootings all came with people from homes with no strong father figure. Young men that were isolated, most of them. And many were on powerful drugs and spent hours playing video games. These are some common traits of these mass shooters. I can't say if the killer here was depressed or on drugs, but the rest of it makes him an outlier. I want to know why. However, numerous outlets, including Heavy, outlined his anger and hatred toward Donald Trump, conservatives, and Fox News in general. He was a leftist. On more than one occasion, he posted to Reddit and Instagram with an F the alt-right. But many of the posts, including one just a couple of days ago, were about sports, like the Dallas Mavericks not making the NBA playoffs. He also posted his support for the Black Lives Matter movement and other left-wing ideas. When my dad died, in an accidental fall almost two years ago. I had a difficult time processing it, wrapping my head around it, as you can imagine. So I took time to read the entire autopsy report when it came out. I thought maybe it would help me understand. Maybe it did some, but in the end, it doesn't change anything. What we're doing now with this tragedy and the one in Nashville and Michigan State and the ones before that, it's kind of like an autopsy. We're digging for answers that won't change a thing. You want to understand, you do. You read, you ask questions, and you try to fill in the blanks, but in the end, none of it matters because it doesn't change what happened. Five people died on Monday at the bank they worked for following the morning meeting in the conference room. Was four, now it's five. Not counting him. They're killed by a guy that was their coworker. Somebody they knew. And a police officer who graduated from the academy just 10 days ago is in critical condition this morning at the University of Louisville Hospital. He barely started his career. It is so senseless. Why have people become so callous that killing people is just no big deal? How did we get to this place? And how did Democrats continue to go with defund the police, disrespect law enforcement? That's another topic. The concern, though, is clusters of these kinds of events. 
copycats. Others trying to inflict damage, kill as many people as possible. Oh, I see that being done. I'm going to go do that next. Listen. When you see one shooting, we oftentimes see a contagion or several shootings uh, in a row. It oftentimes gives uh, some sort of impetus for those that may already have the motivation. I think the second part is the police quickly descended on this. They did everything right. Uh, I, I would say from watching how these law enforcement officers respond in Nashville last week, uh, Louisville this week, they are getting there very, very quickly. But why are we asking them to do this? I mean, they're going into uh, a firefight in the streets of their city. Uh, we have two officers uh, in this case, uh, which were uh, wounded. I, you, they're trying to determine you know, what the outcome was. Was it a self-inflicted wound or was it some sort of fire from the officers that took out the shooter? Mm. The whole attack apparently live streamed on Instagram, meaning it was out there. Social media. I'm going to murder many people. Watch on social media. A live snuff film. Listen. On Instagram, is that stuff going to be taken down? And was he communicating on Instagram before this incident? I will say this, that the suspect was live streaming. And unfortunately, that's, that's tragic to know that that incident was out there and captured. Um, and so we're hopeful that we can have that that incident removed, that footage removed. I would hope that it was removed long ago. And isn't that just another sign of the symptoms of the mental illness that we deal with? We do know that the suspect here, again, 23 years old with a master's degree in finance, working at the bank. He, in fact, had interned at the bank during summers when he was in college and then got a job there. He's been there a couple of years, maybe three now. Totally callous to everything. Walks in, murders his co-workers. What could possibly be wrong in a guy's life at the age of 23 that would trigger this? That would cause him to have no regard for human life. He played basketball for his own dad. His dad was a college and high school coach who left college to go to Indiana to coach basketball so he could coach his sons. He had a close tie with his father, a good relationship. And so this is the stuff that we sort through, we process, we just say, what the hell went on here? And we need better answers. We do. We need better answers. And as far as red flag laws in, in Kentucky, it would have made no difference. He texted a friend and said, I'm feeling suicidal. I might go to the bank and kill every one of them. Something to that effect. Then call the bank. Call 911. You don't need a red flag law there. You need to call 911 and say, my God, is he serious? Is he? Apparently he was. More about the shooting in Louisville and the challenges we face to clean up such a mess after the break. 